God is, is where the rubber meets the road. That's where your prayers get answered. You can pray all you want, but if you don't have faith that God's going to do it, then it, it's no use in praying. That's an empty prayer. We've got to have faith. And so I thought today would be a, a good day to talk about how we can develop more faith in our lives. How we can develop greater faith. And, and I look to Mark chapter 11, uh, some red words as a matter of fact. It's those red words that change our lives. And I believe that they, these words can change our lives today. Mark chapter 11 and uh, verse 20. Th this story starts out uh, back uh, 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 in way back before the 11th chapter. Jesus uh, went by this fig tree and he said he, he put a curse on that fig tree. He said, because uh, he was making an example out of that fig tree to be what Israel was. Israel was being barren and they were not producing fruit. And he said to that fig tree, from henceforth you will not produce any more fruit. And when he said that, the fruit tree looked healthy. And so when they walked back a few days later, or whenever they came back across that fig tree, this is what happened. And the disciples were astonished. So Mark chapter 11, starting in verse 20, said, And in, in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, uh, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus answering him said, Have faith in God. And if you mark up your Bible, you better underline that twice. In verse 23, Jesus goes on to say in those red letters, For verily I say unto you that whatsoever you say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, and he shall have whatsoever he saith. But it all depends on your faith. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come to you this morning, Lord, and we come to you expecting great things this morning, Lord. The greatest thing we expect is to hear your voice in our hearts, Lord, to hear your voice communicated through this message, Lord. Uh, and I, I pray that you use me as your instrument to communicate this message, Lord. I pray that you would totally control me, Lord. Uh, use me, Lord. Uh, control the words that come out of my mouth and let every word be your words and not mine. Lord, I pray that you would just anoint this place, Lord. Rain your Holy Ghost anointing down from heaven to where every eye, ear, heart, mind, and soul is open to the message that you have for us today, Lord. Help us to receive it and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. In you know, these red letters, I love them. I love those red letters. But basically what Jesus is saying is that you could, if you had enough faith, you could tell that mountain over there, which you ain't, you ain't got no mountain, you tap a hammock, didn't you? That's one thing. I'm so used to driving down the road, and sometimes it'll fool me, because on a cloudy day, when it's clouds on the horizon, it looks just like mountains, and I'll be driving down the road, and i say, is that a mountain? Oh, no, it's a cloud. Because where I come from, everywhere you look, it, on the horizon, it's just mountains, 360 degrees. And then I get here, and the closest I can come to a mountain range is a cloud in the sky. <laughs> but Jesus said, if you could see a mountain, if there was a mountain here in Tappahannock, and you had enough faith, you could tell that mountain, jump in the ocean or jump in the Chesapeake Bay, and that mountain would jump into the Chesapeake Bay if you had enough faith. And, uh, and he said, but you can't have doubt in your heart. And you got to believe those things which you say. When you pray for something, when you're believing for something, you got to believe in your heart that God is going to do it. And, and that's where faith comes in. And, and we need to have more faith. But how can we have more faith? Well, I want to give you a few ways we can have more faith in God. If you want more faith in God, you need to think more about God. You know that? Now, Psalm 1-2, the very first part of Psalm, first thing out of the psalmist's mouth, he says, in his law doth thou meditate day and night. And you know, well, again, I always love to talk about meditation, but we modern day 
in meditation, we think about going, oh, oh. <laughs> and, and we just empty our minds of everything and you go, oh. And, and something magical is supposed to happen. But biblical meditation is something different. Biblical meditation, you ain't got to go home. You can just open up your mind and let the Word of God come in. You can open up your mind and invite God to speak to your heart, to speak to your mind. You can just open up your mind and read God's Word and think about it. That's meditating. It's not empty in your mind like the world would say, but biblical meditation is filling your mind with God and with God's Word and with the Holy Spirit. And so that's the kind of meditation uh, we need to do. But you know what? In order to do that, we try to meditate or, or study or whatever, but we try to do it in, in a house full of TVs and, and stereos and iPods and iPads and I this and I that. And, and it just distracts us where we can't get in the right frame of mind to hear God's voice. And I talked about it uh, maybe a couple Sundays ago. Sometimes it's just as easy, simple just to walk out your door and get outside in the yard and you'd be surprised what hearing a bird sing would do to your peacefulness in your heart. And, and it will just give you the chance to hear God's word. You know, we, we, we need to... We need to think on, on God and fill our minds up with Him instead of filling it up with the TV and all these reality shows. We need to fill it up with God Himself. And, and not only do we need to think more about God, but we need to look more to God. You see, we, we look to other people and other things for everything, for all of our needs. If, if we need money, we look to the bank. If, if we need retirement stability, we look to our 401k. If we need food, we look to the deep freezer. You know, we, we look at the, all these other things, and what we really need to be looking to is God. Jesus said, well, the, the writer of Hebrews says we need to look to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. He, that's in Hebrews 12, 2, I believe. We need to look to Jesus, who is the finisher and the author of our faith. He is the one that is going to finish the job that's been started in you. You know that? We're all works in progress. Hallelujah. That's why I'm as goofy and uh, bad spoken as I am, because I'm a work in progress. I'm doing the best I can with what God has given me, and you ought to do the same. I'm not ashamed of the man that I am. I'm not ashamed of what God is doing in my life, but he ain't finished. He ain't finished with you yet, but he's going to bring it to a finish if we keep looking toward him. And when I have a need, I'm not going to look to the bank. I'm going to look to God. When, when I need food, I'm going to ask God for food before I go to the grocery store. Now, granted, I may have to do something to get it. I need to work to get it. But ultimately, everything that we have comes from God. And, and so we, we, need to, we need to look to God more. But not only that, we need to hear from God more. We need to listen to God more. Psalm 85, 8, it says, I will hear what the Lord has to say because he will speak peace unto his people. It says, I will hear what God has to say because he will speak peace. Oh, in this world of turmoil, when life turns us upside down like a, a wave crashing down, the only recourse we have to get peace is to get with God, to hear his voice. His voice speaks peace to our hearts. And we need to hear that voice a lot more than we do. What did Jesus do in the mornings? He got up early and he went somewhere by himself and got with God. Now, you know, that's about the only time if I'm going to sit in my house that I can get with God. Because if I don't get with God in my house early, I ain't going to get with God. It's kind of like Smith Mountain Lake. Now, I love Smith Mountain Lake because you can catch some big old bass in Smith Mountain Lake. I'm going to tell you. I love Smith Mountain Lake, but I'm going to tell you what, if your bass boat ain't in the lake and fired up and ready to go before it gets daylight, you may as well hang it up. Because about 9 o'clock, them jet skis are going to start, them speed boats that go by you, drawing a wake. Ask Christy about them wakes that them, them big old speed boats through. Me and Christy was out there. Little bitty John boat. I don't know. I was back when I was 
I was a lot crazier than I am now. I never do it now. Smith Mountain Lake up there about 9.30 in the morning. A little bit past time to get back to the dock. little 14-foot John boat out in the middle of Smith Mountain Lake. And we fishing Christmas says, oh no, any boats are going by pretty fast. We need to get on back. I said, oh no, I can get one more before we go in. All of a sudden, here's something in the distance. Now, the man starts coming close. And it, what is that sound? Is it a jet or something? Now look, here comes this big, look like a banana on the water. A big, huge banana coming at me about 60 miles an hour. And come to find out, it was one of them speed boats. And it was going by me. And when it went by, I said, hold on, Christy. And about that time, it threw a wave probably about this high. And I don't know if y'all have been in the 14-foot John boat. They don't take waves that high very good. And that thing, that wave crashed. And, and, and water went all over top of us. And he slowed down. I said, well, I'm glad he's slowing down. And he turned back around. He said, he started doing circles around to see if he could capsize us. I, if I could have got onto his boat, but <laughs> when he got through, the boat was in, had water bottles was floating around in the bottom of it. Me and Christy were soaking wet. <laughs> yeah, Christy got the worst end. <laughs> Some of the greatest times of my life, you know. <laughs> Maybe not for Christy. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I won't even tell you about the 14 foot bass boat on the 4th of July. We won't, I'll save that for another day. <laughs> Thank goodness I realized I needed a little bit bigger boat if I was going to play on Smith Mountain Lake. But what I started out telling y'all is you got to get out there early. That was the problem. We didn't get out there early enough. And when it's peaceful and quiet, and when you, if you want to get with God, you got to get with Him in the peace and quiet if you want to hear from Him, because this world drowns out the voice of Jesus. He ain't going to compete with MTV and, and reality shows. He wants you all to himself and he will speak. Some people have said, I don't know, God just don't speak to me. Well, I'm going to tell you, I have never in my life had a problem with God speaking to me. I had a whole lot of problems with listening to what he said, but I ain't never had no trouble with hearing his voice, with him wanting to speak to me, because I guarantee he wants to speak to you today. And he's got a whole lot of things to tell you that would make your life better if you would listen to him. Yeah. But you got to get in a place where you can hear his voice. And it will grow your faith. Not only that, we need to do more for God. You know, that's what, that's what it's all about. We're supposed to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. When we went on, me and Lee and Bubba went on that little mission trip up to the mountains, that was a that was a, a great experience. But you know what? I've never been on a, a trip for God where I want a great experience. I've never been on a trip. I've never done something for God to where I didn't wind up getting more of a blessing than the people I was trying to help. We, we uh, go out visiting a whole lot of time. Matter of fact, we, <laughs> we took a van for Wednesday night and went to some people's houses that was, was uh, needing some visits and and, you know, we went to try to be a blessing to those people, but I'm a dog if I don't get all the blessing on myself. And I don't understand. I'm like, God, I don't want it. I want them to have it. But it all comes back, and, and all the blessing seems to fall on me. Was you blessed when we went up to the mountains and delivered? I was blessed. We was trying to be a blessing to them, but I got all the blessing. Hearing that pastor talk about all the souls that were saved and all the good that was coming about what we were doing, I was blessed. And, you know, it's almost, it almost makes me feel guilty for, for being blessed so much. But the truth is, the more you do for God, the more blessings you're going to get. And, and, it, and the more it grows your faith in God. You want to grow your faith, you get out here and you, you serve God in any kind of way. Whether it's in the choir, whether Sunday school, building grounds, whatever, any puppet show. I, I mean, we got an awesome puppeteer, puppet master. Uh, I didn't even know about it, but yeah, it's great. And, and you just get blessed. I, I don't understand why, more, why everybody don't do it. And, and 
and I think the reason they don't do it is because they're hung up on this thing. They think that they can't do it. So I could never do that. And, and you're right, you can't. But you know, don't let that stop you because you ain't supposed to do it yourself. You're supposed to let God do it through you. The Bible don't say, I can do all things through myself. I can do all things through Charlie who strengthens me. No, it don't say that, does it? I can do all things through this right here. No, it don't say that. Christy's laughing. Come on now. <laughs> can do all, no, the, what the Bible does say is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The truth is you can't do nothing on your own. You've got to do everything through Jesus Christ. But if you allow him to use you, he will use you to accomplish things and your faith will be built up and you will be blessed. Yeah, thank you, y'all, too. That was what I wanted everybody to know time. Everybody will be blessed. And amen. Preach it, Brother Charlie. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Appreciate that. Charlie, <laughs> we was coming back from Yep, we sure did. We seen a cross up in the sky. I can't even explain it. Uh, I was driving, so I couldn't take a picture because I can't hardly drive without holding the cross. Did you get a picture of it? Yeah, Lee's got a picture of it. Yeah, well, his main man's on that one. I've got a bunch of witnesses on that one. Yeah, driving is not my spiritual gift. So, uh, yeah. Some people are defensive drivers. I'm an offensive driver. <laughs> but yeah, we was coming back and there's a cross, a perfect cross up in the sky. It was just huge. I, I think it was God's way of saying, well done, my good and faithful son. You know, and he will tell you that. And in many different ways, it's just another way that God speaks to us. He speaks to us in all kinds of different ways. He speaks to us through music. He speaks to us through friends that speak words to us. He speaks to us through uh, preachers. He speaks to us speaks to us through Sunday school lessons. But we've got to have an ear to hear and eyes to see. And not only that, we need to we need to go more with God. Now, what do you mean? Well, we'll go to a football game, won't we? We'll go to what's that? What's the name of it? Where Redskins play? We'll go to FedEx. Yeah, heck yeah. We'll go to FedEx. We'll go to we'll go to Essex football game. We'll hoop and holler like we crazy. Paint our faces all up. And we'll go to the beach, won't we? Yeah, but where will you go for God? Yeah, and I wish y'all would hoop and holler amen like y'all do at FedEx Stadium and, and the Essex uh, football games. But no, we quiet. We'll go. We'll go for the world. But where will we go for God? That's what I want to know. We need to go more places for God. Because Isaiah 48, 17, he says, I am the Lord which leadeth thee. He wants to lead you. Now, I ain't telling you to go to Africa on a mission trip. I'm telling you this. Go where God is leading you to go. Do what God is leading you to do. And that's it. That's all you got to do. Because I know God is leading some people in here to do some things right now that you ain't doing. And if you would do it, God would do a work in your life. I ain't telling you to go to Spain, go to Rome. I'm telling you, go with God right here, right now to do what God has put in your heart to do and do it not in your strength but in the strength of Jesus Christ. He'll go right along with you. And then lastly, I'm going to leave you with this. If you want to grow your faith, you need to be more like God. You need to be more like Jesus. That's what we're here for. We're here to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. That is our goal. We want to look like Jesus. We want to talk like Jesus. We want to walk like Jesus. We want to think like Jesus. We want to be like Jesus. We ain't never going to get that close. We're going to try. We're going to try to get as close as is humanly 
possible on this side of eternity. 1 Peter 2.21 says you should follow his steps. It says for, for to this you, you were called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his footsteps. Now that's a verse to write down right there. 1 Peter 2.21. Let me read that to you again. For to this you were called. This is your calling. Because Christ suffered for you, leaving for you an example so that you should follow in his footsteps. What does that mean? What did Christ do? Christ said, pick up your cross daily. He didn't say pick it up one time. He says, take up your cross daily and follow me. Take up and taking up your cross means dying, okay? Let's just face it. That's what Romans and, and Hebrew people thought about when the Bible was written. When they thought about taking up their cross, they thought about dying. But Jesus said, don't die physically, but die spiritually. Die to yourself and live for Jesus Christ. That's what we got to die to. We got to die to the flesh and live in the spirit. Do you feel the spirit here today? Yeah. Let me tell you, there is some spiritual things going on that we can't even understand. There is a spiritual realm going on right now. There was a spiritual battle this morning to try to stop you from coming here today. There is a spiritual battle raging God's holy forces against demonic forces. And let me tell you, the odds are in God's favor. Yeah. Because you got here, didn't you? That means the victory is ours. And we need to walk in that victory. And if you want true victory, you're going to have to walk in faith to God. And you're going to have to grow your faith. Well, using these ideas like that I told you, you got to be more like God. you got to go more with God. you got to do more through God. You, you got to say more for God. You got to listen and hear more for God. You, you got to look for God in all of the places that you go, all that you are. And you got to think more about God. You got to think more like God thinks. What is uh, Colossians said? Let this mind, no, it's Philippians. Let this mind be in you, which is the mind of Christ. God wants to bless us this morning. God wants to use us in, in ways that you can only imagine. And he's got plans for you that you can't even imagine. But it all starts with being faithful to him and growing that faith that's in you right now. It's just a seed right now. And, and or some of us, it's a seedling. <laughs> but none of us have the mature uh, product yet. We're all working and growing. And so we need to strive to grow our faith. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for this day, Lord, and we thank you for growing us in our faith, Lord. Help us to be the people that you want us to be, Lord. Help us surrender to the call that you have on our lives, and Lord, in doing all these things, it's going to help us to grow in faithfulness so that we can be mighty warriors for you, Lord. Now, Father, I pray that you would be with us now as we go into this time of invitation. And I pray that if there's anybody here within the sound of my voice that doesn't know Jesus, that they would surrender, Lord. Surrender to you. Lord, if there's anybody here that needs prayer or, or comfort, or needs to rededicate their lives, or, or just needs simple prayer, I pray you give them the courage to come up, Lord. Now, Father, you be with us now as we go into this time of invitation. Jesus' name, amen. amen.